Hey nerds, we're back at the Arconia for a new season. I'm doing a deep dive into only murders in the building. Season 4 has just kicked off, and I'm about to break down the first episode, Once Upon a Time in the West, right now. Welcome back to the Nerd Social, I'm Nathan. As always, if you want to jump ahead of this intro to my analysis or rating, see the chapter links below. Today we're digging into Once Upon a Time in the West, the first episode of Only Murders in the Building Season 4. It's streaming on Hulu now, and I'm here to break down what worked and what didn't. So, seven episodes of the show was were released to critics, but I've only seen the first four so far. We'll do spoiler-free reviews in the mornings or the day before the episodes drop, and then spoiler breakdowns in the evenings because we're embargoed by Hulu on one week can drop spoilers. So if you haven't seen the, my review yet, there's a link above for my review if you want to check out my general feelings about the episode before I get into the breakdown. So let's get into the details and see how this episode stacks up. First, the spoiler-free law line for this episode is, in Once Upon a Time in the West, Charles Oliver and Mabel are whisked away to Los Angeles, where a legendary film studio is eager to adapt their podcast into a movie. However, Hollywood glitz and glamour are quickly over shadowed when the trio stumbles upon a stunning clue related to Charles Stunt Double and close friend Sass Pataki. All right, so let's start breaking down this episode. If you haven't seen the episode, go see the episode. Spoilers ahead. Okay, so this episode starts with a monologue by Charles about video. It, we see that they're finishing up the final episode of the previous season in Oliver's apartment, and then the lights dim, so he has to repeat the line. And on the way down to Charles's apartment to get the champagne, they mention Bev Mellon. So they go down for a nightcap at Charles's place, which starts my general annoyance with the episode, which I mentioned in my review. They keep missing clues about Zaz's murder. They discuss needing another murder, and there are all these misdirects. Charles saying, oh my God, there she is. And he's talking about the bottle or, and then Mabel's, oh shit, I hope th these spots don't stain. Again, I think talking about the wine or the champagne dropping on the floor. The next morning, Oliver and Mabel come to Charles's apartment and Charles had just previously had some dreams about movies. He's also hearing noises. Mabel apparently slept over at uh, Oliver's place and he informs him that Death Razzle Dazzle has been closed because the financial backers need money for their defense. Loretta is flying off to LA for her TV gig and Charles thinks that he has a brain tumor because of the whistling. Again, they're missing obvious clues. This is part of the, this minor annoyance. Howard comes in with his new dog Gravy and he pitches Animal Jobs podcast. And then they get another email from Bev Mellon from Paramount about a movie about their podcast. Charles doesn't know if he can go because he's still worried about Saz, but he gets a text saying that she's covering for Scott Dacula. So then we fly off to LA and we see a very fake New York in LA, which has way, way too much sun and the actors have are way over the top with their New York accents. Charles and Oliver say that they're going to handle the negotiations. However, when they get there, pretty much already locked. They have cast and they have uh, a writer and they also have a director, the Brother Sisters, which was a funny little gag. They just need them to sign over the life rights. And there's a party scheduled for later on in the evening. And there's a, a ridiculous gag here. I was I actually watched this episode with my wife a couple weeks ago. The, the table is cartoonishly large. She pointed this out to me. Like it wouldn't be useful for an actual meeting, but it's cartoonishly large so they could do the the gag of him writing down a four and not really having any experience in negotiation. Anyway, Mabel leaves the conversation because of how they characterize her and the guys meet her outside to console her about the situation. She doesn't like how they characterize her as homeless, jobless, and mumbling. And Charles doesn't like how they characterize him as an unfriendly turtle. Charles says he'll support her decision but Oliver is, is pressuring her because of the closure of the play so the fact that Loretta was, he thinks is moving on without him. Charles is still concerned about Zaz and his driver Sydney take them to her place but on along the way they seem to stop at in, in and out. I don't know if this is an advertisement for this chain. Probably was. I've been to LA a couple times but I don't know that everyone says you have to go to in and out I feel like this is just an ad placement for in and out So they show up at the Sentai Swan which was Charles' old place before he gave it over to Zaz and season one of Brazos. He said if celebrities have short-term leases next to eccentrics who's lived there for decades, Zaz isn't there and the flowers seem to be dying. Later on at the party, we found out who's been cast in the roles. We have Eva Longoria cast as Mabel. Eugene Levy was cast as Charles. Zach Galifianakis was cast as Oliver. Although Oliver 
doesn't really know who Zach Galifianakis is, and Zach actually says he's Jack Black, so there's a little bit of a, a gag there, and Zach threatens to quit. So Eva says that apparently they aged up Mabel because of focus groups saying that the age gap between Mabel and the guys was creepy, and Zach and Oliver do not get along because of Oliver's first not recognizing him. There was actually a pretty funny Home Alone joke there as well. But Eugene is actually very excited to play Charles because of the Brazos was in Canada. Charles is still concerned about Zaz here and also Charles leaves Eugene with a crappy ex excuse. It was a, a very uncomfortable moment. It's the classic kind of shit, Six Creek sort of stuff. So Oliver pushes Mabel to accept the deal and questions why she's stalling. And then Loretta shows up and Mabel goes and she talks to Eva Longoria. And this is what I was talking about in my review when I said she was meandering through the episode. I think this conversation with Eva Longoria was nice, but it also was obvious. Yes, ask for as much money as possible so you can do whatever you want to. Eva Longoria goes through a run of all the things that she does beyond acting. That was funny, but I feel like this is what I was talking about earlier in my review when I said that this meandered a little bit with her character. I think it's obvious. It doesn't matter how people perceive you unless your goal is to be famous. If you have a bunch of money, you can do whatever you want to. So yes, get, as Eva said, a shit ton of money and do whatever you want. So I guess it's fine because she landed in the right place and she asked for the money later on, which is good. But I think it was a pretty secure spot to end up in an obvious place. Loretta and Oliver are actually talking and catching up. And Loretta suggests that Oliver move to LA. And Oliver starts to say something and then he stops and then he just asks for more time to think about it. I have some thoughts about what he was about to ask, but we'll find out later on. Charles is still, as I said, obsessed and he sees Bakula. And Bakula says that Zaz didn't show up for a shoot, which isn't like her. After Mabel speaks to Bev Mellon and asks for a very large number, they start to celebrate. But Charles stops the celebration because he's really concerned about Zaz now. After speaking to Bakula, they go back to the Sunset Swan and they break into the apartment. It seems like the mail hasn't been collected and we see the x-rays of bones that uh, Zaz have been replaced and we get the note that she gets all her bones from Balkaria. There are also a bunch of notes on her desk, one of them saying, looking at Charles, and there's a phone call from Lester. And this is when they actually start piecing together some of the things that they should have started to piece together earlier on in the episode. This is, again, the, the my complaint about them missing things, especially since this is the fourth season and they're crime broadcasters. But they get the phone call from Lester about replacing glass. There was a note, someone put a note that was obviously not Charles, asking for the hole to be replaced. And then Charles asked whether or not it was as small as a bullet hole. Mabel gets a text from Howard telling her that the dog's name is Grave E because he was a cadaver dog and they start to put the pieces together and they finally go back to the Ar Arconia. This is really where the, the framing device starts to take focus and actually is used quite effectively. The framing device of the movies that we started with and then we actually get intercut with them putting pieces together. The beginning of the movie Once Upon a Time in the West and Mabel reviews the blood on the stove that she noticed earlier. Charles texts the person who texts him saying, who are you? Howard brings gravy and they find a trail to the incinerator, which is why the lights went off earlier on in the episode. And they go down to the incinerator and Charles finds a bone, a replacement bone from Bulgaria. This is the part where I mentioned in my review that sort of made me cry. Charles's shock reaction as they get the text from, I guess the murderer saying that it's not your effing friend and just a shock on Charles's face. It just, it broke my heart. It, Steve Martin really sold that. I felt his shock as pain. So, have you seen the first episode of Only Murders in the Building season four yet? What do you think of the direction the show is taking? Share your thoughts and comments down below. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and share and subscribe for more in-depth analysis of film and TV. See you on the next one. Bye guys.